If you or someone you know is in a crisis and is thinking about harming yourself or attempting suicide, tell someone immediately. Call 911 for emergency services. Go to the nearest hospital emergency room. Call or text 988 to connect with the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The Lifeline provides 24-hour confidential support to anyone in suicidal crisis or emotional distress. Support is also available. Live chat. Thank you. Hey everyone, um, I want to welcome a very special guest to Shut Up Ashley. This is a legend, a legendary singer, songwriter, and author of Kef One's Volume 1 and 2, and more importantly, a member of the legendary Motown DeBarge group. Uh, Mrs. DeBarge was the oldest of 10 uh, children. She started singing and writing at a young age, and eventually she became a songwriter for the famous band of Switch, which featured her brother's Bobby and Tommy DeBarge. Um, and then later she became the writer and as well as a lead vocalist. And she pro co-produced um, the this classic song called A Dream. And then in 1983, she appeared in an album called In a Special Way. And um, that album, I believe, was produced by El, her brother El DeBarge. <laughs> and in that album... Um, Bunny had wrote I Like It, my favorite song Stay With Me and Time Will Reveal A Dream was also covered by a lot of many people's favorite artists from Tupac Shakur, Black Street and even down to Mary J. Blige so did I get it all down packed there? Yes, yes pretty much so um, How are you? Hi everybody <laughs> um, I'm the only girl in the group to barge I was raised with eight brothers. We come from, from a musical family. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, my brother Bobby and Tommy started out the first ones to do it professionally with uh, Motown Records. So um, they paved the way. Mm -hmm. And we, went, we came after them as the group DeBarge with Motown Records as well. We did seven records, seven albums with Motown and um, the very first album I produced with my brother, Al, um, did some co-producing uh, on some of the songs and co-writing. Like Time Reveal was written by me, Al, and Bobby. Um, mm -hmm. I Like It was written by me, Al, and Randy. Oh. A Dream was written by me. And um, uh, I am the singer of the song, A Dream, uh, Life Begins With You. All those that followed the group, DeBarge, you know, the only girl singer there, even though all of them have, have high pitches. I think my voice is a little different from um, <laughs> from the boys. But um, went on to today, um, I have three books out called The Capped Ones. It's a three-book series. Mm -hmm. And um, the first book is um, My Childhood. Second book is Fame Years. And the third book is Aftermath, Where okay. I Am Today. Okay, so um, so I did see on the website uh, since you did mention the book. So the third part has been released, or will that be not released yet? On, no, not, not on yet. Juneteenth. Still... Ooh, no, I don't think it'll be Juneteenth. <laughs> oh, okay, but um, we're going to. Uh, I just started really not started the book. I've already started, but I've just started working back on it. So I'm not Ooh. sure when the date is going to be, but it's being um, shot as um, for a movie. So oh, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Yes. Yep. So that is that a reveal? Does yeah, anyone else here. know that? Huh? Does anyone else know that? That is being shot. Yeah. Uh, some people do. This is my this is my second book, and it does have pictures in it. Um, the fame years. And I don't have my first book here with me, but the third book is going to be an aftermath because all I do is tell the stories, mm -hmm. uh, tell the story in the book of what went on in my childhood. It goes all the way up to um, when we leave to go to California. And then the second book, The Fame Years, is um, telling about the uh, the fame, the fame, um, how we got with Motown, yes. how the group broke up, the drug problems and why. And I uh, just kind of like take you through a story all the way up to my brother, Bobby, who was in Switch, his death. And then the third book is going to tell you how God brought me out of all that. Oh, so, okay. And it's a three book series, The Kept Ones. Okay. 
stay updated on Bunny DeBarge's latest projects, as well as information about her classic work on her website, singingflat.com slash Bunny DeBarge Music or officialbunnydebarge.com. And there you guys can shop and be familiar with her latest books and merchandise. Don't miss out on it. So shut up, Ashley fans. We're going to have to review all three of those books. <laughs> But yeah, um, we're hopefully I can set up a book club with that too, with the, all three of the books. Yeah, I want it to be a blessing to others. I want to be a mirror mm -hmm. uh, to people that to hurting people. I started out writing the book just for me, actually, um, mm. just to have last cries. And uh, um, I wasn't doing too well with just sweeping things under the rug. And mm. back in our day, we didn't vent. We didn't talk about those things. And uh, secrets keep you sick. So mm -hmm. it had me uh, sick all the time, um, not able to deal with the things that had happened to me in my childhood. So I said, okay, I'm going to write a book. And we'll start with me and Bobby. We're going to write it. And Bobby okay. passed. And um, so I just began to write it. And um, took the Lord with me. I've, you know, I started out in church. Uh, I knew God for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he followed me so I could follow him. Got out of the church to get with uh, Motown Records. We mm -hmm. had started with Light Company, Record Company. And mm -hmm. um, not started with them. We had gave a demo, excuse me, to uh, Light Record Company, which Andre Crouch was with. And that's what we wanted to be. He was our mentor, and we wanted to be um, like Andre Crouch. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby and Tommy had already left to go do secular music. so And they were with Motown Records. So we were still singing, you know, um, God's Children of Harmony, uh, mm -hmm. singing church songs uh, that we had written. And uh, we sent a demo to Light Records. And Light Records said, well, I love it. I think you guys are great. But we don't know where to put you. We don't mm -hmm. know how to face you. So that was very discouraging to us. And because we had brothers that were in the secular world and went and were doing pretty good. Their first album was out and their first single, They'll Never Be. We said, okay, shoot, we're going, we're yeah. going out to the secular world. My brothers paved the way. We got out there and um, weren't able to talk to Motown right away like we wanted to. So the boys mm -hmm. got signed up with another whole nother record company, knowing nothing about the music business. At wow, nothing all. at all. Nothing at all. Wow. So they got with the music business, and um, uh, I was the only one they didn't sign. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm the oldest uh, yeah. of them all, so mm -hmm. I still had a little little bark in my, you know, <laughs> in our relationship. <laughs> and I'm fussing at them, why did you sign this <laughs> you know, contract? Not knowing myself, I didn't know a whole lot about the music business either. Bobby was a little ahead of us, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, but he was so busy with Switch. But I knew we weren't signed with Motown, and that's what we wanted to be. Motown right. was the only company back then that did salary. And we were in California. I left my job, um, <clears throat> brought my two children out, and uh, we were starving. And we were mm. going to high schools, actually promoting an album that wasn't even ours mm -hmm. um, with this record company. So I went up. I got wow. the nerve. And I said, you know what? They're going to let my brothers go. And the little bit that I knew about the Lord, um, I asked God to go with me and help mm -hmm. me to talk this man out of getting my brothers out of that read, that um, contract. And that happened. And um, mm. now that I look back at it, and I'm like, wow, he didn't have to do that. We had signed a contract seven years. And um, I just went up and pleaded with him. It was real. Just said, look, we uh, you offering our creativity. Mm -hmm. We are doing somebody else's album. Um, it's not yeah. even us. And we're out here starving. And so he said, you know what, young lady, your brothers ought to be glad. They have a big, a good big sister. <laughs> and yeah. he signed um, papers to release us. And so I was able, we were able then to talk with Motown because Motown wouldn't touch us because we, uh, mm -hmm. it was a breach of contract and we, they could be sued and everything else. Oh, which we wow. didn't know that. We knew nothing about that. Yeah. So we're learning as, as we went. Bobby was very upset when he really found out what happened, but there mm -hmm. was really nothing that, that he could do. But um, we got out of that contract, thank God. And thank we God. were able to be with Motown. 
and Motown put us on salary. We were able to create, be, you know, to uh, uh, focus on creating songs yeah. and um, the songs to finish the songs that we had had in us from kids. Mm-hmm. And um, the rest is history. So. Oh, wow. So, so would you describe yourself the glue, like, um, with as in within your family, or or would that torch be your mother? Um, it would be both of us. Me being the oldest, <laughs> um, my mother was the glue. You know, as, as children, she's the one that started us singing. Um, she was the yeah. one that had that uh, you know, thing. You, you got to do this with your children, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, but after we got away from mom and went to California. Um, I think I was the glue to uh, the mediator to keep the boys together. Yeah. And you know, they were young and from fighting one another and being still, you know, I started that at a very young age, mm-hmm. um, being over my brothers. So, uh, yeah, I think that I was I was a glue. Around that time, too, um, if I was in that time, but from what I noticed, especially with like the history that I know with the music. I really thought it was interesting that you all, um, but not, it's not really interesting, but um, I actually thought when I was a little kid that you guys were actually related to the Jacksons Oh, did <laughs> because <you? laughs> I saw you all, I see you all as the Jacksons, like the, yeah. that family dynamic, like the Jacksons. And um, I'm honest, I'm going to say this and I already got in trouble by Michael fans. I actually think your family's more talented than the Jacksons. <laughs> but I love the Jacksons so much. But um I thought it was very interesting that um you all and the Jacksons end up um being involved together in the mirroring of the Motown, you know, track. And but the Jacksons, I don't think they started with gospel, I wouldn't say, but um no. yeah, that's just my perspective. I think it's there. There is, we got the same amount or whatever, but I think that DeBarge was a little more, um, I'll tell it to myself if I must say. Hey y'all, I don't want y'all to miss anything that Bunny DeBarge got for y'all. What I want you to do is go to our website at bunnydebargeshop.com to where Bunny sells t-shirts, tote bags, prayer pillows, as well as two of her autographed books, the kept ones, and I am encouraged. You don't want to miss out on it. Um... <laughs> not over Michael or anything like that. I just think that each one of us uh, were able to sing and to do songwriting and could have went on our own as solo artists. Yeah. yeah. And I totally see that. And um, this is kind of jumping to some of the questions that I have with what's going on to like with, I'm thinking about Michael and the recent news as well. Um, so Michael spent a lot of time um during like his years especially like i believe during the 90s upholding the masters from sony records and everything and i was thinking like how you all like brought so much contribution either through switch the barge uh the sampling um i just want to know like do you guys own your masters or do you have um control over your masters and for anybody that doesn't know um masters is like having some kind of control to some degree um but it can be licensed to like third parties from television shows films and like commercials and even sampling but um that's my question like um like do you guys like does does the industry show you guys love at least financially from like all that work that you've done with the masters and everything okay well signing with motown in the beginning we gave all that away and after so many years, the artist is able to get that back. So we are just now um, coming to where we're getting our publishing back and okay. as well as our masters. Okay. Okay. So, okay. That answered my question. Uh, just retracking to the upbringing, at least, and towards like, because uh, I think you spoke of that in the part one. I read part one. Of my book. Yes, the part one, oh. our volume one. I just, I mean, one of the questions that I have to ask is like, do you have any regrets like in the industry? Regrets that we didn't know what we were getting into, that I didn't, that we didn't uh, study, I guess, the uh, the business part of it. We mm-hmm. went in green. We went in just 
um, thinking you can go in. And I think that happened a lot back then with artists. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't know. And, and we gave, what, what is publishing? Uh, what do we get from publishing? Um, you're supposed to keep your publishing. Um, yeah. Who are managers? And uh, what do they get? What percentage? Was, what's 15%? Um, and with Motown, it was like uh, we were thinking that all the money that they were spending on us, we didn't know that you know nothing's free, okay? That we yeah. had to pay all that back before we could start even seeing royalties coming mm -hmm. and all that. We didn't know all that stuff, you know, just kind of like um, we're there to uh, be creative to write our music and um, actually to uh, do things as a family. Um, right. As the industry went on, we started seeing the business side of it. We started not liking the business side of it and yeah. started to um, actually uh, see, see that uh, they, they had a, a, a place in breaking up, not just a, a group, a family. And so yeah. we did, yeah. So, so do, have you ever felt pressure to be uh, someone that you are not while you're at least still in the industry or anything? I mean, I hope no, I answered. answer. No, I think that pressure comes with those today. Um, but uh, I think the only thing that, that we, we felt pressured about, the birds wasn't dancers. Now, that's one thing that Jackson said uh. over <laughs> I laugh about it still. <laughs> but, um, you know, as we went on, when we got to Rhythm of the Night and, and uh, when we did the Motown 25, they gave us choreography. But we weren't, you know, ones to just, we didn't study dancing at home. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, we come from the church and, and so there wasn't no dancing, not like that anyway. <laughs> um, coming from the church, but um, we were more so uh, we loved harmonies. We loved to pick our harmonies. We loved to swell with our songs, um, Stop on Time. And mm -hmm. we studied that. Um, we studied singing, um, singing together. We studied mm -hmm. uh, writing together, you know, finishing one another's songs. Um, and that's how it started out. But it ended up where we were uh, actually fussing and fighting over who wrote this song? Who wrote that song? No, that's my song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with I Like It, that song uh, was written in different parts too. So it's, so did you write one section? And then I also heard that it was actually, it actually was an L on one part that a lot of people think was um, um, L, but it ended up being another brother. So. Okay. Yeah. There, there's, we all sound alike. Um, but on our very first album, Bobby was a uh, producer of that album and that mm -hmm. album got shelved. There was a lot of great songs on there. What's your name? Queen mm -hmm. of my heart, uh, share my world. Um, but Motown didn't push that because we signed with outside managers. So they didn't mm -hmm. like that at all. So we weren't hearing our songs on the radio again, not knowing what was going on. We just knew mm -hmm. don't sign with inside managers and Motown oh, had a thing where you have to sign, uh, we didn't. We weren't even supposed to be singing our own songs. Actually, they have Motown had their own writers, their own producers. They brought us in, being our singing our songs. Um, that's unheard. That was unheard of with Motown. Um, mm. But we, um, they loved our sound, and so they said, "Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Let's just let them do their thing." You know. Um, yeah. So my brother Bobby said, "You know, he's finding out. You know, no, no, no." You don't want inside managers, get outside managers. So we did that. And little mm -hmm. did we know that Mr. Gordy was really the one that wanted to take us under his wings. And um, he hadn't dealt with the company since uh, the Jacksons that left. And so that, that was a yeah. big thing at Motown for him yeah. to come in and even be dealing with us. And here we signed outside management. We didn't yeah. know. So they shelved our album, our very first album. And that's why you get all this love very close to the very first one we went from to DeBarge just to DeBarge and uh, James yeah. joined the group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I did I did notice that name change too, like uh, DeBarge's and then it just became DeBarge. 
Right. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, okay, so that was for legal purposes? Um, just say it was political. It was okay. what, you know, yeah. What okay. uh, um, Motown decided to do. So uh, it was like, yeah, we were with, Mo we were with Barry Gordy now, we're going to the top, okay? We got past all the other much, much that she had to go through. Now we're with Barry Gordy, and um, we became his uh, protege, they say, <laughs> whatever. And um, yeah, we went, we soared. He had a lot to do with us soaring as well. Took us wow. under his wings. Probably wouldn't have went that fast. Yeah. If it wasn't Mr. Gordy, yeah. But it's 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 very again it's astonishing how that mirrors, um just just probably just a a little time difference but how that mirrors like the Jackson's path as well you know um, exactly because it's the same same man doing it and the same crew so mm -hmm. yeah he took us under he saw that um, you know we were very talented and uh, he took us under his wings and we started doing things and then. Later on, the L started doing things by itself, and mm -hmm. other people, other group members, not knowing what was going on. So it was just a lot of a lot of stuff that happened. And uh, the very last album was um, uh, the album with "Rhythm of the Night." Actually, mm -hmm. you saw this big picture of L and four little pictures of us on the side. It was the breaking mm -hmm. up of the group. Oh man! So my question is: Was there any? Um, jealousy or or did did you all like envious feelings so, towards so that jealousy. um amongst the boys that was always you know i had eight beautiful good looking brothers okay that all the girls just raved over um so they come in saying okay l's my favorite no james is my favorite no mark is my favorite but they take anyone <laughs> so yeah there was a lot of jealousy among them and then when people would put one attention when especially when it was the record company was singling out one when you have boys that could actually sing just as well just as big and they're all big in their um in their um talent okay mm -hmm. and so they had this thing of i can do that i can do that i can do that and um, be, they picked the pe keyboard player, usually which is bands do. The keyboard player is the minister of music, the one that does the production, the one that brings it home. And yes. L was the one that was the best on the keyboard. And so Motown looked at it as a business where the boys didn't look at it like that. We didn't come in business, okay? Mm -hmm. We came in family. Yeah, family, yeah. So, yeah, so things started changing. And, yes, there was... There was um, uh, Jealousy, I don't say envy, um, jealousy amongst the brothers, but I don't think it was anything that wasn't there from just sibling, sibling you know. Sibling, right. Just, yeah, you know. <laughs> I've never been jealous of any of them because they all, to me, are great. I'm their number one fan, each one of them. And it's like me being the oldest, I was able to tell them who they were. You know, mm -hmm. I was the one that would tell them, you know, I started out in music. I started out buying the Marvin Gaye records and I started out there listening to what I bought, you know, and then they're getting into it. And I'm telling them, you're just as good as Joe Sample. You're just as good as Marvin Gaye. You can, I mean, you know, I'm giving them confidence all the way. Right. Bobby as well, you know. So that was me being the oldest, um, actually telling my brothers, you know, because when we grew up, we was biracial and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was like we didn't have that confidence unless we gave it to one another all we had was one another and um so mm. we were picked on in school because we just in case you wasn't familiar bunny the barge has a facebook make sure you check out her facebook follow her like her posts do what you need to do show your support if you love the barge or switch with light skin or we had nice hair or you know stuff like that so it was like we kind of stayed to ourselves, and um, music was all we had. Mm -hmm. So we gave each other confidence, and me being the oldest, I would tell them, you know, hey, when we did the first album, Elle was sitting there, I can't do that, let Bobby do it. That's how Bobby got to actually do uh, the endings of Queen of My Heart and 
what's your name? It's Bobby or whatever. He was actually going in to show Elle, do this. And when <laughs> Elle heard it, Elle was like, uh-uh, that's, that's yours. That's when he was pulled in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wanted them to bring it home. And he's like, Elle, okay, this is what I need you to do. And he goes in and he's telling her, ah, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And Elle's looking at him. He's like, that's a take, man. <laughs> so we kept it, you know. But Elle grew from that. And he he was so afraid of sounding just like Bobby. I don't want to sound just like Bobby. That Bobby got that. That's his, you know. And um, I was like, Elle, you should want to sound like Bobby. Okay. You still have your own. Uh, you're still L. You still do, but but Bobby is setting, paving the way to show you how to go, where to go. And even though they were two different producers, two different keyboard players, they both mm -hmm. played keyboards, two different keyboard players, and um, went two different places. You know, they still were family, and you can hear that family sound. But I gave him confidence, L. Do it. Just go in there and do it. He had his verses, but he was like, let Bobby have the ad libs, you know. And then we were thinking, we're going to all come together anyway. They all, right. You know, eventually. As one. As just a family. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was that was our dream, you know. So, no, Al, you need to, you need to expand. Go, go with it. And he mm -hmm. did. When was your moment to where you, you thought that this is something that I want to do? And I know you, you spoke of that in the book, but. I might as well ask you here. I know I'm probably bringing when up I was a lot of things. Girl, um, I saw it. My mom taught me, you know, everybody was learning little verses to do at Christmas play and, um, and the Easter plays. And my mom says, no, you're going to sing. And I was like, sing? And my mom sang all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I know if mommy said I could sing, I could sing. Mm -hmm. So she taught me songs, sing this after me. And I began to sing it after her. And then she and I would look and she was like, be so happy. Yes, yes. So she told me, okay, now when you get up there, you're going to be scared. She told me all that. She said, close your eyes and see yourself at Jesus' feet. And so I would close my eyes and I would just sing. And I mm -hmm. knew when I opened my eyes and I saw everyone standing and clapping, this is something for me. You know, yeah. it was that innocent and it was singing for candy after church. <laughs> so I got older. And when I got older, the words started to mean something to me. Because I was going through something in my life as a child. I had a very abusive childhood. And um, I think it was the song, uh, Somebody Bigger Than You and I. And those words started ministering to my spirit. Because I was really going through things at home. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the first time I seen how real God was. And I felt the spirit within. And I knew that I had an anointing on my life, that it wasn't me, that it was God. And people would cry when I was singing. So I knew that's not me. That's God. So yeah, I knew it at a very early age. So once you like recognize that and like even um, after you were with Switch or or uh the barge um have you ever tried to get like a solo deal or or anything like that yeah i have a solo album oh, it's God. called um in love and that was after the group broke up no mm -hmm. decided to uh take me as the solo artist and uh, later on Mark decision but, huh it yes because smart. they had built us and all that but um, they didn't push my record or anything. So they actually, it was another political move for them to keep another record company from actually uh, taking me. So, you know, mm -hmm. what they built. Yeah. So it seems like everything is tying like to Motown. I mean, Motown helped a lot, a, a lot to educate you, but also keep a lot of you all from getting out there so um did that happen because barry gordy so was that was barry gordy gone by that time that you became solo um barry gordy the group had broke up so barry gordy was no longer in the group's life um oh, okay. he was in l's life okay still oh okay he wasn't, right 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 the group had disbanded um they took on 
Bobby uh, actually got in the group. They took me as a solo artist, and Bobby and uh, the other boys went with Stripe Horse Records, and they did uh, an album called Bad Boys. Barry just focused on Al, and then that was it. And so, mm -hmm. okay, so Motown got definitely in the way of this. Um, well, Motown, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, hey, um, it was very painful. And I talk about that mm -hmm. in the second book. I talk about, you know, in, in the very first book, you said you read, I mm -hmm. come back on the plane and I'm on drugs. I'm, um, yeah, the group is disbanded. I'm on drugs. I'm going home. And um, that's when I begin my story and talking about I never trusted home. I never, you know, what's going to be at home, you know, yeah. when I get home. And all the other times when I was home, everybody was there to fight over who I was going to be with or whatever. I get home, there's yeah. nobody. So yeah. uh, that's my first book. And then I start back into my childhood. I think I actually uh, also wanted the readers to know what happened to the group to bars because everybody wanted to know what happened. Yeah. Uh, so I tell the story as I see it from my eyes and I actually start out in my childhood and um, it's of a girl. It has a, rede it's a redemption story because um, I had a very abusive childhood actually um, and uh, got out of the church where I was no longer had a relationship with the Lord, but the Lord had a relationship with me mm -hmm. and he followed me till I could follow him. And I am here today because only what you do for Christ will last. And I'm here to be a mirror to hurting people. Uh, secrets keep you sick. And I tell my story and I tell how I needed to have glass cries and how I took God with me because drugs became my best friend. And I needed Jesus to be my best friend. I knew him as a child. Out of all the things that he had got me out of, I knew him as my savior through my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, now I know him as my Lord. And there is a difference between savior and Lord. Savior, I'm calling him, save me from this, save me from that. Mm -hmm. And um, as my Lord, I'm letting him lead me. So I know that I'm here today to tell my story to uh, talk to people in the industry that are selling their souls, uh, thinking that fame is everything mm. and only what you do for Christ will ask. Um, we can't take all that stuff with us. And I've yeah. had, and I haven't had, mm -hmm. and I've seen to the world. And I've also seen to church people, people that I don't want to say church people to say hurting people, people. And I've seen them. N there's never been a joy like, watching a soul come to God, okay? Change their life. Um, it's a void there, and that void is God's place. And uh, you can fill it with drugs, you can fill it with pornography, you can fill it with fame, mm -hmm. all you want is still a drug there. There are many people out there that are silently um, committing suicide. You know, they, people, yes. you know my grandson, this, Three months ago, 18 years old, killed himself. Sorry. And uh, uh, God has given me a passion to even get into that. You know, that kids are silent kids, okay? Silently killing themselves. They're listening to, to music. Um, uh, you know, Satan was the, he was the, the worshiper. Creator. Yeah. The creator. The so he's had yeah. that sin that's happening and we're watching it and I'm watching it and God has yeah. given me the insight to study on it and, and to see what biblically yeah. this is being saying. I mean, we're watching it happen, but, uh, you know, the media tells us what happens. The uh, world tells us what happens every day. The Bible tells us why. And I had to pick a side because I too was straddling that fence. Okay, and he said, "I spit you out my mouth." You know, either if you, it's either hot or cold, but lukewarm. And I was lukewarm. I was constantly saying, "Save me!" Constantly saying, "Save me!" Constantly mm -hmm. taking him for granted. 
and um, uh, God knows how to get our attention. And uh, I got up many times. I had breast cancer. Um, I would get up and I, I had to be delivered from church because I was in church pretending like everything was okay and hadn't dealt with nothing. And um, God can deliver you just like that if he wants you to. But that's not how I got delivered. And I learned. And I know my process today. I didn't understand it then. But I understand my process today. And I was molested by my dad. Um, my mom kept going back and forth to him. I um, didn't understand that. Things have happened in my life to help me to understand. Didn't want to understand it. But I said, help me to God. And when I said that, I trusted. And he came to see about me, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if not, I'd be dead today. I don't look like what I've been through, okay? Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm here. I'm here today to uh, to tell my story. To um, And I want to do, you know, motivational speaking and uh, yes. go to the different churches or have the interviews or whatever. But um, all that was fun at the time. Um, then there was times where it wasn't very fun and I was in a very dark place and um, some of my family members are still there, but I have hope and my only hope today. You got an Instagram? How about you go follow Bonita Barge's Instagram at Bonita Barge. Stay updated with her latest project and even all that she have done within her career. Thank you. Hey, is Christ Jesus and that's because he brought me out. So for me to even stand up and talk about it. And go to different interviews and talk about it is what's keeping me. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. That's what's keeping me. Yeah. So uh um I came to do this interview with you and I'm starting to do interviews with others and I've changed my story. Um because like I said, people are selling their souls to be famous. Um yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth gaining this world and losing your soul. Because, you know, you get up there and they make gods out of you. Yeah. Um, you can do no wrong. You become R. Kelly. You're doing all these different things thinking you can get away with these things, okay? Yeah. And there's no accountability because you got all these yes people around you. You know, before you go, you need direction. You do. And our direction yeah. is the man up above. And... um. That's not saying you got to be uh, totally there in the beginning yeah. because, you know, faith, we go from glory to glory to glory. But you must believe. You must pick a side. And you must stand on that side and um, need to get uh, the leading of, of the Holy Spirit's direction so you know where you're going and you have discernment because um, there's a lot of things in this world today. Okay, when I was younger, I didn't see it today. Yeah. You know, they used to say back then, oh, he's coming back soon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, you get it today and you'd be crazy. I mean, the earth is prevailing. The earth is in labor. Things are going on that, you know, people aren't happy. People aren't smiling. People are evil. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's that day and time. And um, I'm here to tell everybody what got me out of that dark place. Um, this isn't somebody that's been there, had it all together all my life, no. But I've been there and I know what brought you out, what brought me out, and it works for me. Um, like I said, I'm not, I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah, um, so you spoke on a lot of things there. I think I think now I feel like a lot of people is starting to see through the lens of like the industry and how evil it can be, how pressure driven it could be. You you mentioned R. Kelly. What can you say to artists that like want to? I read part one and I'm currently reading part two of the kept ones. Guys, the amount of tea that is in these books, the amount of revelations that we as fans have got, it is unbelievable. You guys don't want to miss out on this like get out like what is because i'm pretty sure did so did you see cat williams interview yes <laughs> so <laughs> what would be like your your advice on that like well uh, and it's it seems like christ is like your answer to it but like um 
like what would be the steps of like getting out of an industry like once you've been in for so long and like how how would someone when you when you caught up in it you mean when yeah. you get there and you see oh I can't get out I can't you know I didn't even know I did this I didn't even know I sold my soul I'm not happy yeah. okay yeah um, you have to go you have to come to yourself mm -hmm. and know that it's bigger than you and like I said pick that side. Yeah. And if you pick Christ and you change, renew your mind to know who he is and who you are in him, you have nothing to be afraid of. He's your refuge. Yeah. That's your way out of that dark place. I didn't think I could get out of my dark place, you know, but uh, I went to the Lord. I put everything aside, everything that I learned, everything that the church taught me, everything my mom taught me. And I said, if you are who you say you are, come see about me. Right. I don't want to die like this. And he came to see about me. Um, he gave me a new uh, perspective of things, um, a new mind, a new, you know, when you get to the end of yourself, you know, that's the best time mm -hmm. that um, he can help you. And uh, without mm -hmm. faith, it is impossible to please God. And mm -hmm. um, we don't see him like we see one another. It's a different dimension. But once you get into the imagination of things and you're totally down, yeah. you see that little hole, you pick and you pick and you pick until that big hole comes and you see the light. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then God begins to take that off of your eyes, take the blinders off and you can see and he knows just when to do that yep so that's like after the you leave in the the void and then you see that light at the end of the tunnel and you reach yeah. the fifth dimension it's like, a, like a death of yourself a death you know yeah. like almost when they want to commit suicide i mean you know come on yeah. everybody that's born into this world only the body dies you live somewhere and yep. nothing is worth um, taking your life. We take our lives many different ways. When we sell our soul for fame, when we yeah. give, when we're doing drugs, when we're, you know what I'm saying? Drugs bring about, open up portals. And um, it's more that we don't see than what we see. And it happens over there first. And then comes yeah, here. Does. So... Yeah, I, yeah. I have a question though. Of uh, since we are talking about spirituality, because this is what I wanted to get into. But um, with all like the the trauma that happened, like in your childhood, like has anyone, um, or have you ever went to anyone or just spoke to anyone, um, and and thought about like maybe there might be like a generational curse or, or oh yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, when I went. When I went to God and told God to come see about me, okay, that's what he dealt, we, dealt with me with, um, uh. the generational curses, um, the things that I thought were right. That was really, really enlightening. Oh, yeah. um, you know, because you know that they say, oh, I know this is wrong. I know I did that wrong. I know this is wrong. But the things that you think are right, the Lord will begin to deal with you with that, you know, your love and the way you forgive and you know, um, the roots of things going mm. back to your mother's mother, <laughs> your father's yeah. father and who you really mm. are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. But you know, you got to ask God, give me the desire to want to live. Give me the desire because that's life. Mm. It's either, it's either to choose life or death. And God, when I leave you, when you really, really go to God and Earnestly seek him, you're gonna find. You yeah. know. And that's life. You don't know life until you know who he is and who you are in him. Yeah, and most people would think like if you know God or if you um is talking about God, like you're you're ready to die, but the you know, once you start really believing and start really seeing the truth it's of life. a lot of situations. You start yeah. to see like this isn't I, real. None of this isn't real. And 
you know, sometimes too, a lot of people might consider earth as hell, you know, like, you know what, maybe this might be hell. And you know, maybe and I the say, other side. but if this is hell and we're living in hell, we don't want to go there too. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's true. It's true. It's true. But, you know, um, you know, deep down, um, it's, I feel like we all know the truth. We just have to tap into it. So with, with was up with us black folks, um, does does your mother come from like any um uh hoodoo roots or anything? Because it seems like you all are powerful manifestors. I don't know, my mom. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think a lot of the stuff comes from my father's. <laughs> On your father's side. Okay. On your father's side, yeah. I really don't know because I really didn't know my father's people. Um, the little bit that I did learn was later mm -hmm. in life. My father's people disowned us. Um, oh. and my father was white. You know that. And um, mm -hmm. he's French. Mm -hmm. And my mother's people were more so in church, um, in the Pentecostal church. So... And my grandmother was very much into the Lord, and um, my mom was very much into the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so I came here. I knew God at, at an early age because of the things that I was going through in life. And um, I talk about in my first book, Mama's Bed. And yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I say I learned in Mama's Bed. I hated sleeping in Mama's Bed because that's where Mama would cry. And I would see things go on and, you know, mama's bed and hear things because she's on the phone talking about it and stuff. But one thing that I loved about mama's bed was that I hear my mother cry and get on her knees in sorrow and come up with joy. So that yeah. was a route to let me know that there's joy in getting on your knees. There's joy in talking to the Lord and in waiting for his presence. Mm -hmm. So I felt at a very early age, God's presence. I felt um, when things, when I was scared, you know, that he was there for me. So that's why I was able to make him my bottom line when there was no one, when there wasn't my mother, my father, and my brothers were gone. And it was just me. Lord, what's going on? The people that I trust, that are supposed to be here and here, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I know I felt you before. I know that you're there even when I don't feel you, you know. Um, you need to come see about me. And God came and saw about me the way that I understand it. And everybody's different. But he'll come and yeah. see about you the way you understand it. He knows your language. Mm -hmm. He's the manufacturer. He's the one that made you. He knew you before you was even born. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he knows how to talk to you. He knows what gets your imagination, your faith, you know. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. It's powerful. Absolutely powerful. And hopefully other artists, they could come to the light, you know, um, or not just come to the light, but just be authentically themselves. And, um, and it's my prayer. It's my prayer. And it's, and it's, it's why I believe I'm here, Ashley, um, today is to be a mirror also in that, you know, um, to be helpful with those that want it, you know. Yeah. Or I know that um, God goes before me today and he prepares hearts that I speak to. Mm. He's already been there, you know. So when I speak, I'm just opening my mouth. Because yeah. the Holy Spirit speaks through me. And I used to be afraid. Oh, what am I going to say? Or what am I going to, you know, how I look and, you know, all that stuff. And it's bigger than all that. Yeah. And God had to get me to the point, give me the grace to tell my story, not to be ashamed, um, not to cry. Because I've, I've had last cries. You know, now when I, when I used to tell my story or whatever, I would be crying. Not anymore because I've had last cries. Just look where he brought me from. And that's how I want, want people to see me. Not as pitiful, but as powerful. It's powerful. You're not a um, victim. You're a survivor. You've right. been in um, 
you've been you've been in survivor energy for years by now you know and um and and that's the thing that a lot of people have to get out of is the, you know the victim mentality of things and you know a lot of people have to I know you did you did a speech about that too right you did a, a, a I think you did a sermon on that before oh what <laughs> actually now that I remember I think you did but um you were on point with yeah, that Facebook? Yes, yeah, I said. think I, I think I saw it like sometime like last year, and then I, I oh, went, okay, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, a lot of people they don't know how to get past you know that point, and then they end up staying stuck at one age, you know, and never progressing. But it's like once you uh, speak your voice, like no one can like take it from you. Once you own your voice, nobody can take it from you. So that's right. It, it's that's you know right. something like that. So. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it, it's a start, you know, healing. And a lot of people think healing is just, just get over it. No, it's a process. It takes time. Can you see me? Is it light enough? Oh, I can still see you. You're fine. Okay, because I can turn the light on. I was just saying. It's fine. I can still see you. But I just hope that like a lot of artists will, will listen to, you know, your message. If they ever come across it and and really see that, you know, sometimes it's not, Getting apologies. I'm I'm talking about Monique here <laughs> to some degree, but it's like um I don't know, like not riding right the fence because I feel like spiritually with Monique, it's kind of like that. Like, do you want to be in the industry or do you not want to, or do you have a calling somewhere else? And sometimes you can see that on certain people when they're speaking, and mm -hmm. I just feel like that you know that Cat Williams interview like really changed a lot of things and yes, woke did. a lot of people up and. Even with what's what what happened with Diddy as well, like um, and T.D. Jakes and swallowed up, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's you know it's it's quite alarming, and I think Joe Olston, you already heard about this, but Joe Olston's church, uh, a man with a gun, uh, two people was shot, I believe. One was a child. Oh, no, didn't. Yeah, um, it's yesterday. Um, oh, I did not know that. So it's, it's, it's a lot going on. A lot of people is, you know, yeah. As you know it's, it's, yeah, it's time to pray. It's time to pray like never before for your children and your children's children. Cause when you leave, you it's, it's bigger than us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you want, the, you want the oil to fall fresh on your children and their yeah. children. So the one to see it is the one to, um, uh, to break the curses, the one to um, stand up and uh, yeah. be a watch, be the watch, the watchtower. Uh, stay, mm -hmm. stay prayerful. The Bible tells us to never cease from praying, and mm -hmm. um, it's that time. It's yeah. that time. You know, they're going in churches. Our churches are. Oh my God. We are the church. Yeah, we are. Okay, it's about kingdom work. It's about kingdom coming here on earth as it is in heaven. And we are the ones God has given us. Jesus has given us dominion back again. Okay. Because, and he's, he uses us, you know, mm -hmm. to uplift one another, um, to pray for one another. You're my sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be downing you uh, or anything. And, and, and older women is supposed to teach the younger woman, you know. So how do we know that? We got to know God for ourselves. We can't know him from Clef Lodala. We can't know him from yeah. Jake's. We can't know him from what's old scene. We got to know God for ourselves. Otherwise, when these pastors are falling or whatever, we fall into. Okay? Oh, God ain't real, whatever. God got to be real to you. Yeah. I like never before. We are, there is no big U's and little lies in God, you know? Yeah. And, you know, maybe um, I feel like once people stop, you know, putting their all into churches and actually working together, it, it could definitely be a start for, for something beautiful, you know, but we can't expect like everything to be peaches and cream. Um, but it's a start, you know, um, to get us all. Well, it's going to get better. It's going to get worse. We already know that. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> so, 
positive it's thinking misses minutes. the barge, you know, but it's like, <laughs> I, I do think all spiritual people do fill in in the air, you know, and it's like, yes, yes oh, you do. Lord, like, you know, yes, you but it's, God is not meant for any man to be lost. OK, Jesus came and he died for the world. God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. So we are to tell one another that bell by the way, I mean that when that COVID came, is like even believers didn't believe anymore, you know? It's time wow. to believe again. It's time to believe again. And either you do or you don't. You know? Right. He's a man that cannot lie, okay? Then I'm gonna believe what he says. And I'm gonna hold on to that by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And I'm gonna tell you, it works for me. And that's what I do on Facebook. I help those uh, believe, I help people to believe how I believe. I be contagious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. He's my only hope. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. COVID uh, changed a lot. You know, um, during COVID, I was actually um, getting bodies out the hospital that passed. Um, as a patient transporter. So it was, it was a lot, um, yeah. very traumatizing, but it's like a, a lot of people. I had it. <laughs> That's God. I'm here. You know? Lot, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people had, um, spiritual awakenings, you know, with yes. that. And there That's is some people I that don't think <laughs> it's <laughs> real. But it oh, I didn't. <laughs> He was one of those people, I, Mrs. Yes, Barge, huh? Yes, yes. Lord. And, um, you know, all I know is this. It was so demonic. Mm. And I was in the hospital eight days. They were getting ready to put me on the ventilator, all that. And um, I could just feel myself dying. And um, the Holy Spirit spoke for me, stood up for me. And I came up out of it. And I learned literally that his strength is perfect. When our strength is gone, you know, I I had never been that sick before in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't breathe. And um, didn't realize how much left me until it started coming back. I was having uh, brain fogs and all that. Ooh, but, yeah. You know, but God delivered me. God brought me out. And that I know the reason more than ever, I always know the reason, but more than ever, why I'm here today. And that's when Jesus really became the Lord of my life. I done did everything myself, Lord. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. I don't want to be in nothing. You don't want me to be in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> you know. I'm well. I'm and glad that, that um I they didn't put you die in. anymore either. It's like that was just crazy. I used to be so afraid, you know. Now. I know why I live. You yeah. know, God had like said something to you, like before they put the ventilator on you, or they didn't do it yet. They didn't do it. I hadn't. I didn't have it on me. They. It didn't happen. It was like you know, I couldn't breathe. Um, and uh, like I said, it was like I was being sunk into a sewer, and mm. I could just feel the Holy Spirit begin to speak from a part of me, and. The only thing I could say was talking in tongues. Oh, wow. I could, yeah, I came up talking in tongues. And um, uh, like I said, the every breath that I took was from him. I knew it was him. Every step I took was him. Yeah, I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't even pick up a can of soup. I couldn't mm. wash myself up. I couldn't get in the bathtub. I couldn't get out of the bathtub. I couldn't get out of the bed. None of that. Um, my daughter had to help me with all that. So I knew what it was to depend totally upon him. And I knew that each step I took was from him. So yeah. even to this day, um, you know how they say Paul had a thorn in his side, you know, uh, it kept him on his knees. And the Lord showed me that that same thing, it keeps me on my knees. You mm -hmm. know, Lord, your strength, your breath, you know. As I take so, yeah, wow. that was my my last drilling of the fence. I'm not drilling no fence. <laughs> I believe the Lord, but um, I know now that I'm ready. You know, 
for whatever he wants me to do. And um, I'm not afraid to die. I, just, I really used to have this fear of dying, okay? Mm. But now I'm okay. And it's your God to do that. I hope I'm not taking too much of your time. What time is it? <laughs> so uh, my time is 7.48. For yours is 6.48. Okay. It's one more question. I just Go wanted ahead. to ask. So <laughs> the Hollywood um, star of fame. I want to start a petition, the DeBarges, to get it, uh, a Hollywood um, Walk of Fame. Like, but I mean, after we did that talk, like, does it even matter? Like, I don't even think that even validates all the work that you all did. Like, I don't think that's <laughs> even enough and, here. Oh well, um, you can do that. How that would happen, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of politics to come. <laughs> That is well. It's a lot, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, that would be yeah. beautiful. Um, I'd rather be known for what I do for Christ. Totally. I really, yeah. I get it. It's more important than that, you know? Yeah, it is. You no, know, this it's God crazy. is going to take a ash <laughs> and burn the earth down, you know? Yeah. After all this is, is done and said and after we take none of it with us, you know. So <laughs> as long as you all are, are acknowledging the eyes of God, like that's I'm happy with it. <laughs> Nonetheless. So <laughs> thank yeah. you. But I don't wanna yeah, I don't wanna I think I went over my time, but um <laughs> wanna play it fair. I wish we could do it's another okay. long. But um <laughs> I'll let you go, Mrs. DeBar. Okay, I'll come back again. <laughs> oh, you will? Ah, oh, please yeah, do. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so they can come, you know, just tell them where I am on my Facebook and my Instagram at Bunny DeBarge. They can come to um official Bunny DeBarge um uh dot com to the yes. website and and get an autograph book for me, or they can oh. get it from them. Amazon. Okay. Yeah. And I have a store there, the Bunny Barge shop. I have t-shirts and you okay. know. I'm going to be selling a prayer pillow and it's um, for those uh, who pray or whatever. And I'm going to start doing some lives and doing some fasting and praying for family members. Oh, um, that's just nice. It's healing. Yeah. Okay. So I have a prayer, big prayer pillow um, with my face on it. And actually it says, always remember Jesus. So. Okay. Yeah, it's like you can put like a little a picture of your whoever you're praying for. Oh, that's All creative. Right. So, uh, guys, if you heard that, please do it. You know, um, <laughs> I'll make sure I added all of that into all of that. And um, then I have um, even uh, a devotional book, ninety days devotional book, where I do like stuff on Facebook or whatever. I took them and I put them in a book. Um, just to help you out each day. Encouragement. Okay. It's called I'm encouraged. You be encouraged too. Oh, that's just amazing. So, so you do public speaking, correct? As well. I want to. Oh, you want How to. How do you think I'll do? <laughs> you do phenomenal. That's why I'm asking. You should probably, uh, um, <laughs> you should probably go to, um, sell full cell university, you know, um, <laughs> Give a lot of like that. I could see you doing that. It could be very helpful for a lot of the uh, singers, producers, those that really want to get into the industry. You could definitely do that. Oh, I'll see. Who knows where God is leading? Yep. <laughs> Sometimes we go blindly, but we go. Yep. Sometimes yeah, we go free, but we go. <laughs> love your approach on it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll let you go, Mrs. DeBarge, and it was a pleasure okay. meeting you. And Nice meeting you and your mom. Tell her I said hello. I mean, goodbye. Oh, yeah. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good Bye night. Now. Bye.